Hey guys, what's going on? It's Mario with Beyond Fitness, and I'm not in the camera right now because I just got back from the gym and I look really shitty, but right now I'm going to show you guys that is three examples, which is your moderate cut, your mini cut, and your contest prep. And I'm only showing you guys these examples because I'm going to be honest with you guys, I'm sick and fucking tired of seeing coaches say, well, sorry, can't share that information with you, it's my intellectual property, and they pretty much essentially tell you to go fuck yourself. So, you know, I'm going to hopefully help a few people out. So here, I'm going to first go over the moderate cut. So please take notes, pause the video if you have to, because I want you guys to absorb as much information as you can from this video. So right here, we have our first scenario being your very basic moderate cut. So this could last anywhere from 12 to 16 weeks. Um, I'm only giving this time frame because it's a very general period of a cut where I don't have a specific amount of weight you could lose, but if you were to look and like gauge your weight, anywhere from, let's say, 10 to even 15, maybe 20 pounds being the upper threshold, you could lose within this amount of time. So right here we have our guy. I don't have a name for him. However, let's just call him David. David. David, is his starting weight is 200 pounds, and let's say that I've calculated his macros out to be um, 220 grams of protein, 65 grams of fat and 235 grams of carbs and he is starting off with no cardio so right now I'm gonna show you guys let's just do a quick fast forward to 13 weeks later where he ends up with so I'll go ahead I'm gonna pause the video and then I'll show you guys in a minute okay guys so now here we have it we have the end of our cut I'm actually sitting down so hopefully you guys can see me or excuse me hear me we have the end of our cut. So now, 13 weeks later, I picked just random number, 13 weeks later, we are now at 182 pounds. David's ending macros were now at 225 grams of protein, 55 grams of fat, and 205 grams of carbs. And he ended up doing, or now he was uh, required to do, three uh, moderate intensity steady state uh, cardio sessions at 500 calories. So now the question is, how do we reverse diet out of the situation properly? And it's a little bit, you know, jumbo down there. However, I'll try to, uh, I'll read it to you guys so you guys can at least get an understanding of what I would do as a coach and what Josh Anderson would apply as well. So from here, we realize the first thing we need to do is increase calories gradually. And a rule of thumb that I like to use to play it safe with many of my clients is increase calories, your overall calories. So if you were to take the total um, I guess you could, yeah, the, to the total calories from his macros, so 225 grams of protein, 205 carb, and 55 fat, that number comes out to uh, 2,215. So to, so to play it safe, we multiplied it by 5%, and we ended up getting 110. So with 110, I simply divided it by 4 because that is the amount of calories per carbohydrate, so divide it by 4, and that spewed out 27.6 or if we just want to be lazy and round it, we could round it to 25 grams of carbohydrate. And then from there, that's what we did. And my goal is that I don't like to see my clients do cardio unless, you know, we need to do it or unless we need to kind of get fat loss rolling again. I don't like to see them do cardio outside of them walking their dog, going on a trip with like to the park or something, and that's that. So my goal is we got to drop that cardio down to as, as minimal as we can. So from there, Three sessions is now dropped to two sessions at 500 uh, calories, moderate and uh, steady state. And then week two, now since we increased carbs, it's time to increase our fat intake and eventually bring it closer to that half a gram per pound of body weight where I like my folks to typically be at, or at least increase it to where, I guess you could say, a very comfortable area for their weight is. So increase dietary fat gradually and reduce that second cardio session because now they're doing two, not three anymore, to 250 calories. So that second session that was originally 500, we reduced that down to 250. So now they're doing one uh, cardio session at 500 calories and now another outside of that at 250. And then week three, depending on how you, know, you respond to the changes because not many people respond in such a relatively good fashion, it's like, Sometimes it takes them a while to eventually get up to other peers where it's like you bump their carbon take up and they start dropping again. So week three, depending on how they respond, increase your calories another five to seven percent. Feel free to mix it with either carb and or fat. So instead of doing, let's say, like 25 grams of carbs, 
crap, do like 10 grams of carbs, 5 grams of fat, something very minimal. And right there, again, from that first session, now that we originally had 500 calories, we're going to reduce that again to now to 250. So now you're doing two sessions at 250 calories, which is very minimal cardio. And then the fourth week, repeat as needed until you have no excess or no outside cardio to perform. And that is exactly how I would, you know, get somebody out of a, a moderate cut. And now the next part, part two, is going to be the mini cut. Um, another typical scenario and how much you'd expect to lose and how to properly diet. So let me get that for you guys now. All right, guys, so here we have the mini cut scenario. Again, our random dude, we're just going to say that his name is Dave for the purposes of this. I don't even know who it is. But assume that we have an individual starting at a body weight of 165 pounds. They realize, shit, you know, I've been, uh, I've been drinking too much during the off-season. I've probably put on a few more pounds than I would have liked to on a few months. So now they're at 165, and I've decided that their base starting macros would be 175 grams of protein, 55 grams of fat, 155 grams of carbs and I put on the top there six weeks and no more because we, we do not want any sort of metabolic adaptations to be occurring during this time. We just want to get in, lose as much weight as needed, get back to bulking, that's it. So for the cardio, uh, let's just assume that this person has a desk job, pretty fucking lazy like myself. And I suggested that, hey, to make the best out of your time and to make the best out of your workouts, let's throw in two sessions of HIT. 8 rounds, 45 seconds rest, 5 minute warm up, and 5 minute cool down. And again, like I said, this is no more than 6 weeks. I mean, 6 weeks is kind of like the upper threshold of how long I'd like somebody to be on a mini cut. So now let's fast forward 5 weeks and see where Dave ends up. Alright guys, so here I have Dave's into the future 5 weeks later, and now his ending weight was 153 pounds. So he definitely lost a fair amount, especially in that five weeks, which some would call aggressive. But again, if you're doing a mini cut, I guess you could say the general rule of thumb is that if you're doing a moderate cut, moderately bring your calories back up. If you're doing a, a, an aggressive mini cut or an aggressive deficit, you would aggressively bring your calories back up. So I forgot to mention in the first segment here on the mini cut, assume that Dave's ending bulk macros were 175 grams of protein, 80 grams of fat, 440 grams of carbs. Let's just assume that was his ending bulking macros, and he was like, okay, time to mini cut. So his initial, the ending macros after his mini cut were 165 grams of protein, 45 grams of fat, and 140 grams of carbs. You, I guess you could say the last week or two, he decided, screw it, I might as well get a bit aggressive and see if I could push forth for any fat loss. And he was still following the same uh, hit procedure. And during this time, I like I wrote uh, on top right there rate of fat loss anything above two pounds per week is always a positive and I say that because it's a mini cut you're not in there you're not trying to babysit your metabolism you're in you're out you're trying to lose as much as you can within that time frame get back to bulking so the question begs now is what do we do now and for week one I only put week one and week two because it's not something so extensive it's just in and out you're not wasting much time so right there week one bring your calories to what they were before you're like before you were bulking so just bring them up at all grad I'm not, not gonna say gradually but bring them up very close to your ending bulk macros and then drop one of the hit sessions feel free to replace that with a crappy you know 250 calorie steady state or whatever you choose to do and so right there I have 175 grams of protein 65 to 70 grams of fat and 390 to 400 grams of carbs and this is beneficial because, I guess you could say, as Lane Norton puts it, your metabolic capacity, you're better off being 10 pounds lighter and pretty much being at almost near the same food intake. So that's a huge positive. And that's something even I did myself and pretty much I had some good success with. And if I can recall, one of my good clients, Delfino Cordova, back in the day, actually ran a mini cut. And he dropped a significant amount of weight within that time. And pretty much we shot his intake literally to the same numbers and he had amazing success with it. So now week two, adjust your calories as needed using that 5% to 7% rule of thumb. 
very basic. Again, you could go higher, you could go lower, depending on that, but we'll touch on the contest prep portion in a second. So again, your body weight should not fluctuate that much. You'll probably see a quick immediate rise in weight just due to possibly refilling your, or restoring your glycogen. But I mean, for the most part, water weight, restoring your glycogen, that should all reside with very temporarily and you'll go back to maintaining that very low baseline weight. So now here we go, the final portion, the contest prep. Okay guys, and now here we have the contest prep and the duration of a typical contest prep, assuming you're doing it right, you're not doing some 12 week fucking quick, you know, lose as much fat, starvation. So here the typical rate of a contest prep goes for about 30 weeks or more. And these are usually your guys that begin dieting at the beginning of the year and have aspirations to compete in the Jordan Cup or compete in later shows down the road. And the rate of fat loss is going to be gradually slower, but the whole concept and premise of this is that you are babysitting the living shit out of your metabolism. You're only losing as much fat, as minimal as possible, to ensure that your metabolism is healthy throughout the entire duration. So soon we have Dave, right? Our starting, starting weight of 190 pounds. We, I don't have a body weight, we're not doing any of that bullshit yet. So his starting macros would be 240 grams of protein, 75 grams of fat, and 235 grams of carbs. And we have a refeed day of 215 grams of protein, 75 grams of fat, and 370 grams of carbs. And his starting cardio is two uh, moderate intensity steady state at 400 calories. This is what we're beginning with. We're not trying to be super aggressive. And again, like I said, fat loss, we want this to be very slow. So what's going to happen is if we realize, shit, he's losing too quick, well, uh, depending, you know, maybe that first week or so of dieting, we can, you know, allow that to happen. But we're going to want to bring his calories just a little bit back up to ensure that he's losing within that range, 1.5 being the highest. If he's dieting for 30 plus weeks or more, we don't want him losing any more than that because we need to make sure there's lines in his ass when he's four weeks out. So now, let's fast forward into the future, 35 weeks later, 35 weeks, all right? So here we go, assuming he's gonna lose about 30 to 40 pounds to be in contest shape. Okay, and here we go. Okay guys, so now here we have it, the contest prep, he is at the end of his prep. He, uh, his stage weight was um, 158 pounds, and let's just assume he looked great. He actually, you know, was about 190 pounds beforehand, but he kept the shit relatively tight, didn't get too fat, and his ending macros now were 225 grams of protein, 35 grams of fat, and 145 grams of carbs. His refeed was set at 210 grams of protein, 40 grams of fat, 265 grams of carbs and as you can see his cardio definitely increased to three sessions of uh, moderate intensity steady state at 500 calories and two sessions of hit at whatever it may have been so remember that typical protocol that we I showed earlier let's assume that and now the question begs to us what do we do now so the way that I would look at this is, again, you have to look at it from what have they been doing, what did they do in the beginning to where they are now. This will kind of give you an idea and dictate what to, you know, get rid of and eventually start building on. So the first thing in week one where it says bring your carbs back in. So what I would advise is I would advise a small bump in calories, something ever so minimal because you're babysitting the shit out of your metabolism. So anywhere from 10 to 20 grams of carbs, whether you want to bump your carbs 5 grams every other day for that week until you hit that 10 to 20 grams, be my guest. Um, and I would advise that out of those three sessions of the moderate intensity steady state, assume that you have, so essentially it's 1,500 total calories for that week to do in cardio. You'd be dropping 250 calories from one of them, so now it's two sessions at 500 and one at 250. And then week two is now, you know, let's bring some fat back in. Again, it, there is no set formula for putting carbs in first, putting fat in first. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. Just again, monitor your body weight when you are making these changes. So week two, increase your dietary fat and your carb intake. But again, before we have that five to 7% rule, I'd suggest going a bit more conservative because like I said, you are 
just end a contest prep. You've been dieting for 35 weeks. Pretty aggressive shit. So now you bump it maybe three to 4% of your total calories and remove another 250 cardio calorie session. So now you're at two sessions of 500 calories for cardio. And that's great because you've already removed an entire session of cardio, which is great. So that's something you don't have to worry about. And for the most part, you've increased your calorie intake and you're still within stage weight. And now week three and week four is repeating the same process of gradually decreasing your cardio and gradually increasing your caloric intake. So now week four, now we can increase calories maybe a little bit more aggressively. We're still you know, being a little bit more conservative. However, we're basing and increasing our calories off of two things, one of which I forgot to place there. One is going to be your gym performance. So I want my athletes to ensure that strength is slowly increasing back in the weight room. They're slowly, you know, starting to flirt around and touch weights that they were once messing with. They still don't feel extremely weak and it's like strength losses all over again. So week four is going to be increase your calories by four to five percent of what your total calorie intake is at that point. And again, be conservative because you were dieting for, thir you know, Dave dieted for 35 weeks. And really, this is like the process. This is quote unquote, the intellectual property of so many people that claim that it's a secret, they can't, they can't tell you, and it's like, this is it. This is what some people charge like 150, 200 bucks, you know, for four weeks to tell you how to reverse diet. So hopefully I've saved you guys about $800, a do-it-yourself guide into reverse dieting. And again, this is Mario with Beyond Fitness. I'd go on camera, but I look like shit. And if you enjoyed this content, please give it a like, please share it. And if you guys have any, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a shameless plug. If you guys have any coaching inquiries, please do message us. I'll post the uh, email and the Facebook and also the website link down below. And I ask you guys and urge you to join the Beyond Fitness group as well because there's always informative posts in there. Bro, uh, there's many more people active in that group as a post on the page, which is kind of weird. But if you're looking for an answer to something, you'll definitely find it in the group. This is Mario again with Beyond Fitness. Thanks for watching and take care.